Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating and understanding the coefficient of variation using SPSS. I have here in the data editor in SPSS fictitious data, and I have an ID variable, and then month one, two, all the way out through month 10. And let's assume that these values are the number of times a participant used substances in a particular month. So we can see without making any calculations that the participant identified by 1001 didn't use substances too often from month 1 through month 10. In month 8 there was no use. But if we move down to the participant identified by 1011, we can see that this individual was over 200 times every month from month 1 to 10 over 200 times that a substance was consumed. So we know that the mean values going across each participant, the mean values are going to vary quite a bit. So if we want to get an idea about the dispersion, the standard deviation may not be the best way to go. To illustrate how this works, I'm going to first calculate the standard deviation and the mean for each participant. So I'm going to go to Transform, Compute Variable, and the target variable I'm going to use first is SD for standard deviation. And then I'm going to look at the function group over here, and move down to statistical. And you can see that there is a function for the standard deviation. So I double click that. And normally here I would drag in month one and then delete the question mark and drag in month two and delete the question mark. To save time, I've copied month one comma month two and so on out to month 10. So I'm just going to use control V, paste those in. So we have standard deviation of month one through month 10. So I click OK. And you can see that the standard deviations vary quite a bit from participant to participant. I have a standard deviation here of just 0.52 and a standard deviation for record 10 of 29. Now to calculate the mean, I'll go back to transform and compute variable and you can see that SPSS retains the information I used for the last computation. And that's quite convenient because I can go to, to target variable and just type in mean and I can go here where it has SD and I can just change the function to mean. I can just type it in. I don't have to double click down here in the functions and special variables. I can just type in the function mean and leave all the months in place and click OK. And now I have the mean for each of the participants. So this is the average number of times they used substances over this 10 month period. And you can see this also varies quite a bit. The low is 0.6 and the high is 226. And this is where the coefficient of variation comes in. We want a measure of dispersion that takes into account that these means are different. We want the ratio of the standard deviation to the mean. And that's what the coefficient of variation is. If we go back to transform, I'll show you two ways to compute it. Uh, one is you can use this function you can see here it's CFVAR, coefficient of variation. And again, I can just type that in, CFVAR. And then I'll change the target variable. I'll just call this CV, or coefficient of variation, and click OK. And we can see now we have a measure of dispersion that takes into account the mean. It's the ratio of the standard deviation to the mean. So now we can compare the participants to one another using the coefficient of variation. So we can see the participant identified by 1011 who had the highest mean has the lowest coefficient of variation. And just by looking at the standard deviation we would not have known that because the standard deviation is similar to other standard deviations in this data set. 
I'll also show you a second way to calculate the coefficient of variation. If you go to transform, compute variable, we can just delete this numeric expression. And for target variable, I'm just going to change this to CV1. I'm just going to add a 1. And it's going to be standard deviation divided by the mean. That is the coefficient of variation. So I click OK, move back to the data editor, and you can see SPSS generated the same values. These are identical. So in this case, the coefficient of variation was useful to us because of the variation in the means. But the units here in this example were all the same. They're all measuring the number of times a participant used substances in a month. But you can also use the coefficient of variation when the units are not the same. So the coefficient of variation is useful when the units of analysis are different and or when the means are different. I hope you found this video on calculating and understanding the coefficient of variation in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.